The Tusk Resort in Mabatu was the base for the O'Hagan's Kapanong Hotel 500, round five of the Bankton Off-Road Championship. Organized by the Mafeking Motor Club, the event was for motor vehicles only, with 37 special vehicles and 37 production vehicles scheduled to come under starter's orders. The designated service point was a hive of activity. The route is a bit now. The soccer is with the brand car. One of the wheels is going to go further. Hey, awesome, eh? Very fast, but uh, well marked and going well, eh? Going, going, going. Hey, awesome, eh? Hey, awesome, eh? Hey, awesome, eh? It's fast out there. The boys are whacking each other. It's 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 good going. It's, it's absolutely excellent. <laughs> Yeah, we got stuck. I don't think he saw us. So we got in next to him in the bush. And he came around the corner like that. He just bashed each other like that. Nothing serious. I think well. Exactly. We lost the pad yesterday. It seems the same thing has happened today. There's obviously a problem somewhere along the line. And uh, to drive this monster truck with no brakes is a handful. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get it to the finish. There was no stopping this impaired of Villiers and Jordan, who had had a trouble free run up to this point. It wasn't all plain sailing for Woolridge and Skoltummer. The Ford Racing Ranger was stuck in fourth gear, which made the going difficult. Machechenen and Sally were still the special vehicle leaders, but could not afford to relax for one second because the Duplessis brothers were just waiting to bounce. Interestingly, the mobile Jimco previously belonged to Machechenen. Greg Harvey and Boy Stone were third in the special vehicle category in the Castle Queen Motor Spares Jimco, while Duncan Foss and Mike Griffiths were the new Class D leaders. As was to be expected, Schroeder and Peckham still held on to a comfortable lead in Class E. Mark Corbett and Juan Moore in the Century Property Development Isuzu had moved up into second in Class D following Hartsbrook and Bosch's retirement. The m and &E last bat of Bodo and Gary Bertolt was now third overall in the special vehicle category and was going like the proverbial bat out of hell, as was the Sony PlayStation Pajero of Henry and Maurice Le Mutton. Marcus Taylor and Mark Deschulain were the new Class B leaders in the Truck Time Ace Co, but were under pressure from Colin Matthews in the single-seater industrial hardware WPP. <laughs> With less than an hour to go, De Villiers and Jordan continued their charge at the head of the field. vehicle leaders were still Machechenen and Sally in the Sam Racing Jimco. Foss and Griffiths led Class D and were third overall in the production vehicle category in the Nissan Hardbody. In a phenomenal performance, Schroeder and Peckham were fourth overall in the production vehicle category and the Class E leaders to boot. Class E championship leaders Hugo and Jaap de Brain had no answer for the Ford pair and had to be content with second place in Class E. Another casualty was the Nashua Mobile Chimco of Terence Marsh and Trevor Ahea. And there was a new Class S leader, Mohamed Noor, in the rather sick sounding race co. Wonder how long he'll last. Another Class S contender, Fricky Borta, had moved up to second in class, but a flat left rear tire would cost him valuable time.
about uh, 10Ks ago, we went through a through one of the uh, rural areas and uh, one of the locals threw a huge big rock at us and uh, the rock went through the cockpit and it hit the back of the uh, radiator you can see there where the hole is in punch of the radiator that's when he threw to the cockpit from the side of the road it broke the radiator and he uh, broke my visor as well while Boerta struggled with his seat belts Carolyn and Minnett sneaked by to regain the Class S lead now the race was on of the O'Hagan's Coppenong Hotel 500 and a spectacular aerial display by the ex-World War II Nissan Harvards welcomed Camille de Villiers and Francois Jordan across the line for their second overall win of the year. It was a good race. The second loop we really went without any hassles and uh, we're just glad to win again. <laughs> Very disappointing. We were moving up nicely. We were up to third on the road. Fancied our chances on the second loop against the Nissan and the Ford and about 40 k's out the front right knuckle just sheared off completely on the weld. Nothing you can do about that. Um, a bit of a moment, fortunately it didn't happen in one of the faster sections, but yeah, very frustrating and that was a day run, so yeah. Woolridge and Skoltama limped across the line, second overall in the Ford Racing Ranger. The Ducasi brothers collected their first overall victory in the special vehicle category, with the mobile Jimco a little the worse for wear. They were followed 12 seconds later by Machachinin and Sally in a similar Jimco. Champagne for the victors. And a pop wheel to cry, and to the two day after that, the good Atang was for us, to the other wrong slot to mark and to come us away from. Machen and his family were proud onlookers. We had a punch to lose, right? And uh, thanks again to this guy coming, you know, he brings a fair amount of luck to us. Third overall in the production vehicle category, and the Class D win went to Foss and Griffiths. We had a great run until some of the locals <laughs> threw a couple of rocks through our windscreen, but uh, one landed in, on, on, either on my head or on my left. I don't know, and it hit Mike and the glass came through onto his face, but other than that, no problems. It was a great run. More drama was to come as Billy Prinsloor sped to the finish, a victim of the stone-throwing incident. He was struck above the eye by a rock and returned back along the route to alert a marshal. This deviation from the route resulted in his exclusion from the results. Schroeder and Peckham led from start to finish to pick up the Class E win. Oh man, I got hit by rocks through the side first, straight through the windscreen. Uh, I don't know, look, it's just bad news, eh? A bit of a scary one, eh, with all the stones and rocks and barbed wire across the road and it's not nice, eh? Stones and big rocks rolled in the road and... Uh. Marcus Taylor and Mark Deschelaine notched up their second consecutive Class B win in the truck time Ace Co, while Fricky Boerta got the better of Carolyn and Minnett to win Class S. Marius and Francis Bursma provided for some light relief when they arrived without a roof on their Land Rover. It was later retrieved by an enthusiastic and vocal group of youngsters. Kasi Kutsia had to be airlifted to hospital as a result of the stone throwing incident and co-driver Oki Hubert drove home solo. We had a bit of an unfortunate incident, aren't you? Uh, Kasi was thrown by a rock and it looks like he's uh, mauled. Everything is broken, his teeth came out, so we stood for about half an hour waiting for a chopper. But luckily he's in hospital and just luckily he's stable by now. Piazza Musso and Abraham in the O'Hagan's Copenhagen Hotel Jeep finally made it to the finish and won Class F in the process. really eventful event. Uh, I think everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. But uh, I think we've defied all odds and got it to the end. Uh, I think uh, for the Hagen's Copperong team, it's a uh, great satisfaction. The top 10 placings in the production vehicle category. Overall victory and two class wins for Nissan and one class win for Ford in the O'Hagan's Copperong Hotel 500. Jimco's occupied the top three positions in the special vehicle category. A fine sixth overall for Taylor and Deschelaine and a maiden class win for Fricky Buerta.